uh, the backdrop for all of this is this Hamas delegation that's heading to Cairo tomorrow, I understand, for these Gaza ceasefire talks. This is Hamas saying this. We're not getting a confirmation that they're definitely on. But again, Hamas does appear to have the upper hand when it comes to PR. Um, that, that's probably a point of concern to my next guest, Michael Oren, the former Israeli ambassador to the United States. Ambassador, very good to have, have you back. Do you know anything, sir, about this Hamas delegation that's heading to Cairo? It just seems surreal that Hamas is, is part of any delegation arguing peace. But what do you make of it? Well, they're not about arguing peace, Neil. It's always good to be with you. They're, they're arguing that basically nothing because their position has been strengthened uh, by the American position, by the international position, which says uh, over and over again, just hold on, hold on for another week or two, and we'll impose uh, an arms embargo on Israel, hold on for another week or two, and we'll, we'll impose a permanent unconditional ceasefire uh, on Israel. So why, why in the world would Hamas want to give up concrete assets, and I hate to think about as really hostages as assets, but from, from Hamas's point of view, that's exactly what they are. Why would they give up concrete assets in return for a, a temporary ceasefire, after which Israel would simply renew the effort to destroy Hamas? Uh, they would never agree to that. But that's the message they've been getting from the United States and the world. Are you angry? Are, are some of the your friends you talk to in Israel feeling abandoned? Oh, young feel abandoned, and, and, and I don't think angry. I think the world is baffled and frustrated. You know, here we have a, a country, a small country, in the, in the midst of the most inhospitable uh, region in the world, uh, in which 360,000 reservists report for duty. That'd be equivalent of about 20 million Americans. That's more Americans than fought in all World War II. Volunteered to go out and fight for their country, fight for what they believe in, uh, at, the, at the cost perhaps even giving their lives. And how many countries can you count on like that in the West, going out to fight for the same values that Americans stand for, I cannot for the life of me, I don't think Israelis can the life of them, uh, understand why anybody, anybody would want to weaken our ability to fight for those same goals, for those values. Fact of the matter, it is what it is, Ambassador Wright. I'm just wondering now if the White House is sending that clear message that things could change if Israel's conduct of this war doesn't change. That's fairly blatant. How do you feel about it? Well, I feel that you know, we should try to get on the same page to the maximum degree that we can with the United States. We should address the humanitarian disaster. Uh, if it's important for President Biden to talk about the day after scenario, we should talk about the day after scenario. And every possible scenario should talk, because talk doesn't cost us anything. But at the end of the day, we have concrete uh, strategic interest on which we can't, we can't concede. There's no flexibility. We have to destroy Hamas. If we don't destroy Hamas, this country simply will not be able to live. We won't have internal security. We won't have regional security. And by the way, people in Washington who want to see Israel make peace with Saudi Arabia and other Arab countries, those Arab, Arab countries will only make peace with us if we're strong, not if we're weak. Uh, they're watching very, very carefully. The Iranians are watching very, very carefully to see how we respond right now. Uh, Hezbollah on our northern border with 150 to 170,000 rockets pointed at our city. They're waiting to see our resolve. And frankly, in the world, the Russians, the Chinese are waiting to see whether the United States will stand by its allies. What happens here uh, in Israel will have ramifications around the globe. Make no mistake about it. Is there any sense among fellow Israelis, uh, Ambassador, who feel that there, there's a, a stopwatch on this war right now? Uh, even Donald Trump has said, you know, to, to essentially try to wrap this up, that the war needs to finish up. Uh, I think I'm quoting it. Well, the war needs to finish up. Uh, and twice when asked whether he's 100 percent behind, Israel said, did not answer that. So even among a, a, a president who could change hands at the White House, the views are, are eerily similar. What do you make of that? Well, we've always been against a stopwatch. I've been aware of it since uh, October 7th. Um, and yeah. it's not just the, the American stopwatch, it's an Israeli stopwatch. It's these 360,000 reservists who have left their jobs in, in high tech, uh, in industry. These are our, our major uh, family supporters here who have left uh, to go off to fight for five, six months uh, straight. Uh, there's an ammunition uh, uh, clock, which we're going against all the time. Uh, so there's different, different clocks going, yes. And the Israelis want to wrap this up as soon as possible, certainly in the south, so we can face the challenge up north, which is, in fact, a much, much greater challenge. Uh, but right now, we have Hamas using the civilian population 
of Rafa, of southern Gaza, as a human shield. And in a strange way, uh, the United States and the world is also using that population as a human shield, saying, don't touch Rafa, don't tell Hamas uh, in, doesn't harm us in the southern part of the Gaza Strip because there's civilians there. Uh, so there's a strange, strange confluence uh, of tactics uh, between Hamas and many, many governments in, in, in the West. And it, it's very disconcerting for us. Just incredible. Uh, Ambassador uh, Michael Orn, very good chatting with you again. I'm sorry again, under these Neil. circumstances. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.